Someday, 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 someday. Good morning, Golden Heights. Again, it is a privilege and it is an honor to uh, speak with you uh, this Lord's Day about Jesus and about what he did for us on the old rugged cross. Uh, never do I get impatient uh, with uh, talking about Jesus and about what he has done for us and what he is doing for us and what he is doing for you even right now. For it is in him we live, we move, and we have our being. Rest assured that uh, God is good. Not only is God good, but it is in him that we live and that we move and that we have our very being. And we don't want to ever forget that concept. We don't want to forever forget the fact that uh, without God, we will be in this world by ourselves. Without God, nothing is possible. That is, nothing is lasting uh, without God. Uh, we can talk about our finances. We can talk about our families. We can talk about our education. We can talk about our health uh, as it is. Uh, but just know that without God, we would not have awaken this morning, but because of the goodness of God and because of the grace of God, uh, he awakened us this morning and he started us on our way. So it's a privilege, uh, as always, to speak to you uh, over this medium. It is an honor, it is a privilege uh, to speak to you, and it is my pleasure uh, to be able to talk to you uh, as members of this great church, uh, to let you know that God is well, God is alive, and that he loves us. And he loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16, and verse number 17. He loved us so well that he gave us heaven's best, and that is... Uh, homiletically speaking, he plucked the fairest flower that blossomed in the paradise of God and sent us Jesus. That's how much he loved us. He sent us his only begotten son. And Jesus came to this low land of sorrow, found it wallowing in the cesspool of immorality. And, but he loved us as well. And he loved us so much until he died on the old rugged cross that we might have redemption and that we might be redeemed and we might be cleansed of our past sins. And so we are just grateful uh, for God. We are so grateful for Jesus. We are so grateful for the Holy Spirit. Uh, God sent his son to the world. And he sent the Holy Spirit to the church that he might lead us as believers, leave us, uh, lead us as members of the church of Christ. And we don't ever want to forget that, for it is in him, I repeat, that we live and move and have our very being. So Golden Heights, good morning. God bless you. I love you. And uh, I believe that you love me. And we love each other. And we've been together for many, many years. And we will continue to be together uh, because of the goodness and the favor and the grace uh, of God. And we look forward uh, with anticipatory glee uh, for that day when we shall be able to meet as a group once again to sing and to pray and to uh, worship God in spirit and in truth. So again, good morning. God bless you. 
And I certainly hope that all of you uh, are listening uh, to the word. And I want to give you a word this morning that uh, I believe uh, will be sufficient for you as you maneuver uh, this week. As you go from day to day, uh, there is a concept that I want to give to you uh, about God and how good God is and how that uh, without him, we could do absolutely nothing. And to those of you in our media church, we want to uh, welcome you in. Uh, and we have a wonderful media church, members of the Churches of Christ from around the world, throughout the United States. And we are just grateful for your listening and for your contributing and for your comments uh, that uh, you give us as we preach and as we teach uh, every uh, Sunday morning. And we pray that uh, we will say something that will cause you to, uh, to uh, be better Christians in the future, better believers in the future than you've ever dared to be in the past. So God bless all of you uh, that are tuned in this morning, sharing with us the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, the great gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God under salvation to all them that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, for as it is written, the just shall live by faith. That's how we live. Uh, that's, uh, that's how we operate. We uh, believe uh, by faith in God and his son Jesus Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit uh, in our lives. And we don't want you to ever forget that because uh, without God and without Christ and without the Holy Spirit, we will not be able to maneuver in this old sinful world. And so uh, it is my hope that you will not uh, uh, ever lose your faith and that you will not ever uh, decide that there is something better that you can do uh, other than serve the Lord. Uh, for uh, God is too good and he has been good and he is good and he will continue to be good uh, to us, and he will continue to bless us uh, because we are already in Christ Jesus, and it is in Christ that all blessings flow. So thank God for you, and thank God for all of those of you who tune in from around the world. Now I'm going to pray for all of those of you who are listening, and Golden Heights, we want you to join in with us and that is, we want you to agree with us as we pray for each other and as we pray for all those things that are necessary and beneficial to our walk in this old, unfriendly world. I'm going to ask now that you pause and bow as we pray to the God of heaven who doeth all things well. Let us pray. O Lord our God, Thou who ruleth and super ruleth over the universe. We pray to you, our Father, because we recognize certain things, one of which is we have faith in you and we know that you hold the world in the hollow of your hand. So we come before you bowed in our spirit to thank you for another day. Thank you for touching us this morning and waking us up and starting us on this new day. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Thank you for the gift of your only begotten Son who came to this low land of sorrow, suffered, bled, and died, and rose again the third day for our redemption. We thank you, our Father, for all that you do. And now, our Father, we 
I pray for those who are sick uh, in our church. And we pray that you will continue to watch over them. And you know what they need better than they know themselves. And we want you, our Father, to please strengthen them. Uh, strengthen all of those who are shut in and shut down and shut out. Uh, we pray for them that you will continue to bless them and that you will heal them with your mighty power. For we believe and we are assured that you are a doctor that never lost a case. We pray now for our world. We pray for the leaders of our world that they might lead wisely so as not to bring chaos and destruction upon us all. Bless those, our Father, who need you. Bless those who are sick. Bless those who are infirm. Bless those who are shut in and shut out and shut down. Be with them. Give them what they need for what they need it for. Strengthen our faith. Strengthen their faith. Help them to believe that you are God. And you are God all by yourself. Thank you again for Jesus who hung, bled, and died on the hilltops of Calvary that the world might know you better. And we pray, our Father, that you will continue to bless us, continue to lead us, continue to give us what we need for what we need it for because you know what we need and what we need it for. And we just thank you and we praise you, bless this message this morning, that something will be said that will cause someone to think on their way. And for those who have not yet obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, who have not yet said yes to the Son of God, to Jesus Christ, our blessed Savior, we pray that something might be said that will cause them to be convicted and decide even today that I'm going to go to Jesus, for he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And we believe you will do it, and we leave it in your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask all of these blessings. Amen. Now we are, again, uh, still dealing uh, with this concept of God the Father and who he is and what he means in our lives and how that without God we can do absolutely nothing. No one in TV land, no one in radio land can be successful without God. The book says that without me, you can do nothing. And that is, you can do nothing that will last because everything will pass away. One day we will close our eyes in death and go back to the dust of the earth. But your soul and your spirit will remain and you will stand before God in the final roundup of human affairs, given account of those things done in your body and in our bodies, whether good or whether bad. And so we're just so grateful uh, for God. And, and I want to continue uh, this concept uh, of God. I, I know that those of you who are members of the body of Christ, you say, well, Brother Washington, I know about God. Well, I'm sure you do. Uh, I'm sure many of you are Bible readers and and I'm sure you believe in God. But I want to uh, give you a few features of God. I want to give you a few features of Jehovah. Yeah, I want to just remind you. And, and I know that some of you say, well, I've heard that before. Well, maybe you have. But the more you have it, the more you hear it. And the more you have it in your heart and in your mind, the stronger, the stronger you will be. Uh, as a child of God. Now what we have done uh, by way of, of review 
And of course, your notes will uh, indicate uh, what we did uh, on last time. Um, we dealt with Revelation 19 in verse number six. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. We talked about that. I don't want to uh, just deal with that again because we've already uh, dealt with that. Uh, God reigns. Uh, God has always reigned, and God will always uh, reign. And not only will he always reign, but God, we said last time, is a sovereign God. Uh, not only is he a sovereign God, but he's always been sovereign. Uh, David says in Psalms 190, and verse number two, he said, Before the mountains were born, thou gavest birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. God is from everlasting uh, to everlasting. And we said last time that God is the source of our lives. He is the source of our lives. We would not be here, you would not be here, were it not for God. And, and that's an attitude uh, that I want each of you to have, and that is just know that I am who I am, I'm what I am, I have what I have because of the goodness and the blessings and the mercy uh, of God. Uh, he is the source of our lives. He is the source of our lives. You remember what Jeremiah said uh, in Jeremiah chapter number one and verse number five? Jeremiah said, before ye were, uh, God said to Jeremiah, before ye were in the womb, I knew you. And so God is the source of our lives. He is the reason uh, for our lives. He is the reason uh, for your existence. He is the reason for our uh, existence. That's a mindset that you do not ever want to forget. And not only is he the source of our uh, existence, but he is the cause of our existence. And uh, as I said also last time, that he is a cause of our salvation. And, and those of you who are saved, those of you who have obeyed uh, the powerful gospel of Jesus Christ, just know that God is the cause of your salvation. Uh, without God, you would not be saved. And we don't want to forget that. God is the reason. God is the cause. I gave you some things last time that God uh, is the primitive cause uh, of our salvation. And Jesus Christ is the sacrificial cause of, uh, of our salvation. The Holy Spirit is the revealing cause uh, of our salvation. And the gospel is the instrumental cause of our uh, salvation and faith is the appropriating cause of our salvation and baptism is the consummating cause of our salvation. Now, God reigns. Not only does God reign, but God is a powerful God. And even though God is God and beside him, there is no other God. This morning, I, I want to uh, talk to you about some things that God cannot do. Uh, some things that God cannot do. Now that uh, might sound like an oxymoron when the Bible teaches very clearly that uh, all things are possible with God. We can talk about that, uh, of course. Uh, that uh, Those verses does not mean uh, how we have interpret them, interpreted them uh, down through the years, but I don't have time to deal with a proper uh, interpretation uh, in terms of context uh, as to what uh, that phrase mean when uh, Matthew says that with God all things are possible based on what they were talking about. Uh, that's the context. And so with God all things are possible. The disciples were wondering about, well, who in the world can be saved? Well, then Jesus talked to them, uh, told them that uh, with men and with man, uh, it may not seem possible with God. All things are possible based upon uh, what the text uh, is talking about. Um, 
God is sovereign. God is a sovereign God. Uh, David says in Psalms 90, in verse number two, before the mountains were born, thou gavest birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. The God that you serve, the God that I serve, and the God that we will continue to serve is from everlasting to everlasting. God uh, always uh, was and God will always be. He is from everlasting uh, to, uh, to everlasting. But I want to go over a few things with you uh, to explain to you that even though God is all of that, even though God is omnipotent, uh, meaning that he is all powerful, God is omnipotent. Uh, That's number one. You may already have that in your notes, but you need to be sure you got it in your notes. The the characteristics of God, uh, God's character. Uh, in terms of who he is. He is omnipotent. That word means that he is all-powerful. Not only is he all-omnipotent, but he is omniscient. And that means that God is all-knowing. He knows everything. There is nothing that God does not know. Uh, He is not only omnipotent, he is not only omniscient, but he is omnipresent, which means he is everywhere. Uh, and he is everywhere at the same time. That's who he is. I'm trying to give you a concept of who this mighty God is. He is all-powerful. He is all-knowing, and he is present everywhere. He is always present. The eyes of the Lord is in every place, beholding uh, the good and the evil. Yet, uh, I want to impress upon you there are some things that God cannot do. Uh, There are some things that God will not do, and I want you to to listen carefully. There are some things that this all-powerful God, this all-knowing God, and this God that's everywhere, and this God that you can't get away from, his eyes, uh, his presence is everywhere, beholding uh, the good uh, and the evil. Number one, and you can write this down, uh, this is the, the first thing I want to talk about in terms of some things that God cannot do. Uh, God, this great God, this, uh, this magnificent God, this all-powerful God, this all-knowing God, uh, there are some things that he cannot do. This God that existed from everlasting to everlasting, there are some things that he cannot do. Uh, this God that uh, made the earth and everything therein, This God that said, let there be light, and there was light. The same God uh, that has all power, uh, and and he is sovereign. He is a sovereign God. He does what he chooses to do, and no man can stay his hand. Uh, God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. He plants his feet on the sea of time, and he rides On every storm, our God is a merciful God. Our God is a good God. Our God is an everlasting God. Our God is from everlasting to everlasting. But there are some things that our God cannot do. What then is the first thing? Number one, uh, and you can write this down and put this in your notes. The God that you serve, the God that I serve, the God that that created you and the God that created me. Number one, he cannot lie. And that's important. He cannot lie. Now, that's to give you an appreciation for his word. Uh, Every word of God is pure. It is a shield to them that put their trust in him. Add not to his word, lest he reprove thee. And thou be found a lie. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5, 6, uh, and 7. Every word of God is pure. Uh, And the first thing you want to know about God is that he cannot lie. Whatsoever he said in his word, and whatsoever he says in his word, shall come to pass. Don't expect God to change it. It doesn't matter what anybody tells you. If it's in the word, And if it's a command, if it's a command uh, for Christians and for believers and for those who have obeyed the gospel of Christ, whatever 
he says unto you, then your responsibility and my responsibility is to do it and have confidence in it. Have confidence in his word. Have confidence in what he says. When you open your Bible and whatever God says, whatever God says he will do, he will do. Because number one, he cannot lie. You'll find that in Hebrews uh, chapter number six uh, and verse uh, number eight, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. The God that we serve. And, and what I'm saying to you is put confidence in his word. Uh, whatever he says in his word will come to pass. Whatever he says he will do, he will do. Now we say, well, I haven't seen it. I, I've been praying I, and I've been beseeching the Father and I've been doing all of these things and I pray constantly. Don't lose your faith because if God said it, it's going to come to pass. Because here's what we know going in, that this God cannot lie. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse uh, number 18. Number two, he cannot change. God is not a changeable God. He's one thing today and he is another thing tomorrow. No, 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 no. God is always the same. God does not change up on you. God does not change up on me because he is a God that cannot change. Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 6. Here's what the book says. Uh, Malachi says, talking about God, I am the Lord. I change not. God says I don't change. When I tell you what to do, when I give you the plan, and I don't want you to understand that. I'm, I'm, I wish I had time to deal with that because there are some who teach there is no plan. Well, that's, that's false doctrine. There is a plan. Praise the name of Jesus. There is a plan. God does have a plan. And not only that, God always have had a plan. He had a plan uh, in the Old Testament. He has a plan uh, in the New Testament. And uh, don't you forget that. And God's plan does not change. God cannot change. God does not change. Now, of course, his law might change. Uh, and his law did change. Uh, but God does not change. He is still God and will always be God. And whatsoever he says, he does not change alt from it. He does not go away from it. Just know that. When you read your Bible and when you see in your Bible what you must do as a child of God and what many of you have already done, what thousands of you who are listening to me have already done, and you are now a member of the body of Christ, just know that what God commanded you to do to become a member of the body of Christ, what God commanded through his son and through the apostles for you to do to become a child of God and to obtain salvation, that has not changed. While the apostles preached it uh, in, the, uh, in the New Testament, <coughs> pardon me, uh, while, while God through his apostles of Jesus Christ, preached it in the first century. Uh, it does not change. The plan, and I want to say that again, I don't want to hang in here, uh, but I want all of those of you who are members of the body of Christ, I want you to know that God does have a plan. And any man who uh, claims that God does not have a plan for our salvation, and God does not have a plan uh, for worshiping and praising him. Those who take those positions, those are false positions. God does uh, have a plan. And all we have to do is read his word and we will see uh, what his plan is. And uh, that plan does not change. Uh, the plan for those uh, 3,000 on the day of Pentecost, uh, when they asked the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? God had a plan for them. And the Holy Spirit spoke through the apostle Peter and said, here's what you must do. You must repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that does not change, that has not changed. 
It will not change. And whatever they did on the day of Pentecost, ah, that's what we ought to do today because that's God's plan for saving man. Because the great question was asked on that day, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter told them what to do. And that plan is still operative today. And if you plan to be saved, then you read Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38. And those are the uh, initiatory steps for a man or woman to become a child of God. It was good then and it's good now. And the Bible says that when those folk were baptized, they were saved. We know they were saved because verse 47 of Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, And the Lord added to the church daily, such as those, such as should be saved. And so uh, God does not change. God does not change. The order that Peter gave on Pentecost does not change because God gave the order. Holy Spirit inspired Peter to tell those people what to do. So number two, God uh, does not change. And not only does God not change, let's look at number three. Number three, he cannot break his promises. He cannot break his promises. Whatever God has promised those of us who are believers, whatever God has promised those of us who are children of God, hear me, it will come to pass. Now, you may say, well, it hasn't come to pass for me yet. Well, uh, you, you keep living. Just keep living. And God will move in your life, but he will move on his own time. Uh, he, does not, he does not move on our clock. God moves on his own time. He cannot break his promises. Not only uh, will he not break his promises, or he cannot uh, break uh, his promises uh, in, 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 in the uh, 89th uh, uh, chapter or the 89th division of the Psalms. Write that down and listen to, listen to David uh, talk about God uh, and listen to what God says. He says, my covenant I will not break nor alter the words that have gone out of my lips. God says, I will not break my covenant. Whatever my agreement was that I made with you when you became a child of God, I'm going to keep it. But I'll keep it on my own time. Never get disheartened. Never decide that, well, maybe God has forgotten me. No. No, whatever he promised you, whatever he promised me, whatever he promised every child of God is going to come to pass because he cannot break his word. And not only that, but number five, I don't know, I may not be keeping up with these numerically, but you're writing it down. Hopefully you're writing it down. I'm saying this is number five. It may be number four, but whatever it is, uh, I'm, I'm giving it to you as number five. He cannot despise a broken and contrite heart. He cannot despise a broken and contrite heart. God will not turn away from a broken and a contrite heart or broken and contrite spirit. Listen to David in Psalm 51 and verse 17. The book says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, God, these, O God, you will not despise. God will not despise a broken and contrite spirit. And if you remember the body of Christ, wherever you are out there in the world, wherever you are, and you've been like a desicle about your duty to God. You've been lackadaisical about attending church. You've been lackadaisical about evangelism. You've been lackadaisical about doing the will of God and doing those things that Jesus has commanded through the Holy Spirit by way of the apostles. Listen, 
you can come back to God, you can renew your covenant with God if your heart is right and if you are broken, broken because you deliberately have neglected worship. You have deliberately not done what Christ and the Holy Spirit commanded you to do. And if you are broken because of that, if your spirit is broken, broken because you know better, and I'm talking to members of the body of Christ who knows better. I'm talking to members of the body of Christ who knows uh, this as well as I do. And you know what your responsibility is. And you know what you should be doing. And you know whether you are doing it or not. The commands of Jesus. Listen to what the early church did. They continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayer. And those people went everywhere teaching and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ as evangelism. And so I'm saying, uh, to, I'm saying this to encourage those of you who are members of the body of Christ. Don't you give up. And I know there, there is a lot of uh, newology going on uh, in our fellowship. A lot of strange doctrine in our fellowship and a lot of strange gospels. Uh, uh, Paul called it another gospel. Don't you give up. The same gospel that was preached by the apostles, the same gospel that uh, went across the whole world, then known world, by the disciples, the same gospel that the apostles and the disciples turned the world upside down. I submit to you that same gospel, Paul says, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that call you into another gospel. There'll be not another, but there will be some. There'll always be some. There will always be new voices. There will always uh, be new theologians coming up with new ideas but if it's contrary, if the ideas are contrary to the teaching of the apostles, if, if, if the doctrine uh, that's, that is set forth is contrary to what the Bible says, then don't you believe it. Paul says there will be those who will try to change it, but they cannot change it because there is not another and then he goes on to say, though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached. Let him be anathema. Let him be a curse. What are you saying, preacher? I'm simply saying anyone who comes to you and bring a doctrine, teach a doctrine, set up a doctrine that cannot be backed up by the Bible, then I'm saying to you, don't believe it. Let it be a, an anathema to you. Because there is only one gospel. And that's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, beloved, just know that uh, God cannot despise a broken and contrite, contrite heart. You can come back. Wherever you are out there in TV land, if you've been unfaithful and you have not done what you know you should do, you can come back to the Father. You can come back to church and you can identify uh, with the church, live a good life, and God will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. And then, number six, he cannot save you without faith. You have to move quickly here. He cannot save you without faith. He cannot. 
even though he's powerful, but he cannot save you without faith. Hebrews 11 and verse uh, uh, 6. And then number 7, and I'll stop with number 7. He cannot be worshipped too much. I wish I had time to just go ahead and deal with this one. He cannot be worshipped too much. I'm saying to you, those of you uh, in radio land and TV land, don't let anybody tell you that you can worship God too much. He cannot be worshipped too much. God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let me close with Revelation chapter number four. John the, Reve John the Revelator. Uh, Revelation chapter number four uh, and verse number eight. Uh, just write that down and you can read it later. Uh, and verse number eight. Uh, uh, where what's going on in heaven and, and God uh, worship in heaven. God appreciates, uh, he appreciates worship. God wants to be worshiped. Uh, Revelation uh, chapter four, verse eight, quickly. The Bible says, and the four living creatures, each one of them having six wing wings, are full of eyes around and within, and day and night, they, and day and night, day and night, you can't worship God too much. Because in heaven, the Bible says he is being worshipped day and night. And he says that worship day and night does not cease. And what are they saying? They're saying, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. What I'm saying to you is that in heaven, 24-7, God is being worshipped. The angels are bowing down to him, saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty. And the Bible says they do it day and night. And so, if you are one of those who say, well, we can worship God too much, I come to tell you, you can't worship him too much. You can't worship him too much. Every time there is an opportunity to worship God, you need to make sure you are there. And what are you doing preparing yourself for the time that you'll be in heaven with God? Because up there in heaven, they're doing it 24-7. They're doing it day and night. And they are saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You can't worship God too much. God is a God that loves worship. And he is being worshiped in the portals of glory 24-7. So don't forget to worship. And just know that he cannot be worshiped too much. And now... Let me define worship for you. You won't find this uh, on the pages of inspiration. You won't find this in your dictionary. You won't find this uh, in your th uh, thetaurus. But let me just say to you that um, here is a definition for worship that I don't want you to forget. Now, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to recite it slow so you can, uh, you can write it down. What is worship? What is worship? Here is my definition of worship, other than what the Bible teaches. Worship is the time and place we bring the gods, G-O-D-S, small g, we have made before the God who made us. I want to say it again. I don't want you to forget it. Worship is the time and place we bring the gods we have made before the God who made us. Now you write that down and uh, you go over it. And of course, I think you will see the real essence of, of that definition uh, of worship. 
And I pray God that you will not forget uh, the six or seven things that uh, I just gave you uh, about some things that God cannot do. And, and just know that whatever he says will come to pass. Just know that. Just know that. Put your faith in God and everything will be all right. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He is Jehovah. He is our God. From eternity to eternity, he is our God. He is all powerful. Jesus is all powerful. But there are some things that he cannot do. And so if you're not saved this morning, here's how you can be saved. If you're not saved, if there's someone listening to me, they want to be saved. First thing you have to do is to hear the gospel. Make sure it's the gospel. Because the gospel is a death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So that's the first thing you have to do. Be sure you hear the right thing. The Bible says, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. When they heard what Peter preached, they were pricked in their hearts. And then you need to believe it. When you hear about Jesus and what he has done for you and what he has done for all of us, believe it. Because without faith, it is impossible to please him. And then you need to make up in your mind to change your life. Change your life. If you're not a child of God, if you have not come to Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ in your life, you need to change it. I wish I had more time to deal with that. Change your life. We call that repentance. Jesus said, I tell your neighbor, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And, 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 and Peter said, Acts 17, 30, at the time of this ignorant God winked at, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. And then you need to make that confession. You need to make that confession that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Because if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then nothing else will matter. You will, you will never be saved. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Je Jesus says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. Then baptism for remission of sins. Peter told that great multitude on the day of Pentecost, repent and be baptized. In Acts 22 and verse 16, Ananias said to Paul, why tarry thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. I suggest to you this morning that if you're listening to this message, and you want to be saved, then that's how you are to be saved. And then what will God do? He will add you to the church. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47. And I pray God that you've been helped this morning. I pray God that you wrote down those things that God cannot do. He just, he just cannot do. He cannot save you if you don't have faith. He will not despise you. He cannot despise you if you want to come back to him. Those of you who were baptized years and years and years and years ago, and you have not been faithful, don't be ashamed. God loves you. And he wants you to come back to him. If you are unfaithful, you know better. Come on back to God. Come on back to the Father. Because he cannot despise a broken and contrite heart. Do you love the Lord? I know you do. So what I'm saying to you, never give up on God. And do not allow uh, your secular affairs to cause you to give up on God. And don't let anybody tell you that uh, God can be worshipped too much. He cannot be worshipped too much. Because when I look into the ports of glory, 
I hear John the Revelator saying, I saw the four and twenty elders. I saw them and they fell down and they worship him. 24 hours a day, all day, crying holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Don't let anybody truncate your worship. Don't you allow anybody to truncate your worship. That is, cut it short and say, that's enough. That's enough. Because I have, cho I have shown you that God appreciates worship. Because in heaven, he is worship 24-7. All day. And that the angels, and the four and twenty elders, 24 hours a day, crying, Lord God Almighty. God bless you. Hope I've said something to help you. And some of you probably have heard this before, but that's okay. I have to keep preaching the word. And there's some folk, after hearing it for so many years, they want to hear something new. No, there's nothing new. Everything God wanted you to know was in the word. And repetition is designed to make you a stronger child of God. So God bless you. I love you. Thank you for your comments. If you have questions, just let us know, and we'll deal with it. Now we're going to move into our communion. And for those of you who are in position to do, the, the communion for this morning, this is, this is that time. So if you were there with your family, uh, one or two of you together, wherever you are, let's take this time to remember Jesus and how they murdered him on that old rugged cross and how they pierced him in the side and out came blood and water. So if you have the Passover emblems, uh, the bread, in the cup. This is the time now, Golden Heights, that we participate in the communion. And then after the communion, uh, those of you who wish to do so, want to do so, and you want to give uh, your lay-by, or you want to support the gospel of Jesus Christ after the communion, then we'll have the offering. God bless you. God keep you. Never forget that the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Bless you my brother and sisters and let us pray. Our Father and our God thank you so much for the message this morning. We pray we have said something to stir the hearts of believers. We pray, our Father, that we've said something to stir the hearts of those who know your will but have yet been a little lackadaisical about their commitment to you. Pray for them because I know that you will not despise a true and contrite heart. Bless us all because we need you every hour. Bless us. Keep us in the hollow of your hand. And help us to have our faith in your word. Because there are some things that you cannot do. And we pray, our Father, that we will let these things guide us. That we will let these things move us to doing 
your will, and your way. So let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. God bless you. God keep you. And in the name of the risen Savior, we ask all of these blessings. Amen. Amen. And amen. There's no doubt for it. I'm going to sing praises to